This is a short video about the importance of quantitative methods in biology, brought to you by Mark Ponnell and Sachi Kushu. An atom is the smallest unit of matter. This is the starting point from which we will embark upon our journey in exploring quantitative methods in biology. When you begin putting atoms together, you can build an amino acid. Each amino acid is comprised of an amino group, a carboxyl group, and a side chain that is unique to each compound. Developmentally, 22 amino acids are of importance. When taken up into the human body from the diet, the 22 standard amino acids are either, either used to combine to form proteins and other biomolecules, or are oxidized to urea and carbon dioxide as a source of energy. But wait, since an amino acid is made up of atoms, it's got to be bigger, right? But how much bigger? Acids. Proteins differ from each other by their sequence of amino acids. These macromolecules have abounding roles in the function of a cell. Some important examples include catalyzing metabolic reactions, replicating DNA, responding to stimuli, and transporting molecules from one location to another. The folding of a protein into a three-dimensional structure dictates its ultimate function. DNA is a molecule that encodes the genetic instructions for all living organisms. Its structure is a double helix, represented here by the intertwining strands of grass. Each nucleotide of a DNA molecule is made up of a nitrogenous base, a sugar, and a phosphate group. This sturdy molecule is great for information storage. So we've covered some of the basic molecules, but what does it look like when they start coming together to make something like a eukaryotic cell? The cell membrane is represented here by strands of grass. This phospholipid bilayer is essential in separating the interior of the cell from the outside environment. It is selectively permeable. This means the cell is able to control what comes and goes across the membrane. One of the key features of eukaryotic cells is the nucleus. This is where DNA transcription takes place. Surely DNA must be smaller than the nucleus in order to fit inside of it, right? The, the mitochondria, mitochondria is, is the powerhouse, powerhouse of the cell. cell because it produces ATP for the cell. The inner mitochondrial membrane is, is compartmentalized into numerous cristae which expand the surface area of the inner mitochondrial membrane, enhancing its ability to produce ATP. So now we know a little about a eukaryotic cell. I wonder what a prokaryotic cell like a bacterium is like relative to that. Bacteria have no nucleus. Their circular genetic material is instead located in the cytoplasm. Bacteria move by means of rotating protrusions, which include cilia and flagella. This, this is, is so hard, hard to follow. How, How could we, we make, make this more clear? clear? Let's, Let's take, take a, a more, more quantitative, quantitative approach to this biology. Remember the atom, the smallest building block of life? Well, it's teeny at only one-tenth of a nanometer in diameter. And what about an amino acid made up of many atoms? Bigger, of course, about 0.8 nanometers in diameter. Let's move on to the protein, a crucial macromolecule for life. After combining many amino acids and undergoing folding to form a complex structure, the typical globular protein is about 4 nanometers in diameter. Now, surely you're wondering about the size of DNA. It matters a lot. It's the genetic material. DNA is contained inside the nucleus, which is inside the cell. And how these sizes relate is a critical facet to the life of eukaryotic cells. With that in mind, you'll be glad to know that the nucleus has a diameter of 5 micrometers, which is 25,000 times larger than the diameter of DNA. The mitochondrion, while well, yes, it is the powerhouse of the cell, is only one micrometer long. Now let's look at that cell membrane. It controls what goes in and out of the cell. Really important, right? Well, it's about four to six nanometers wide. And remember the prokaryotic bacterium? Close to the size of mitochondria, actually, at one micrometer in diameter and two micrometers long. Cool. And finally, the big reveal. What's the diameter of a eukaryotic cell? It's got to be fairly large to encapsulate things like the nucleus and mitochondria. Well, the diameter of a eukaryotic cell is about 20 micrometers, which is 10 times the length of that bacterium. Water is essential to the function of a cell. Now that we know the width of the phospholipid bilayer is about 4 to 6 nanometers, it's easy to see how water is easily able to pass through it as it is only about 3 tenths of a nanometer. Now that we know the size of the cell, the width of the membrane, and the size of a bacterium, thanks to the use of quantitative approaches in biology, it's obvious that the bacterium will be incapable of entering the cell if it were to try. Aren't quantitative approaches in biology neat? And on a parting note, one final reminder. Biology is cumulative. Life is cumulative.